evening and welcome to the Architecture Foundation's 100 Day Studio and Bedtime Stories. Uh, we're coming up to the 100th anniversary of T.S. Eliot's poem The Wasteland and it seemed a good time to revisit something which has drifted in and out of artistic and cultural consciousness in the decades since it was written. Uh, it was written in 1922 uh, as the acrid smells of war and pestilence had not yet lifted from the city and a new dawn which may have lifted the sorrow was being held back by depression. The Wasteland is a poem which I think we can still speak to us today um, with a new pandemic in the air and shivering in the foreshadow of economic uncertainty that we are. It's a labyrinth of text grown from a variety of hedgerows, dead ends and uncanny moments of deja vu. A corner turned and you greet a familiar stanza before it dissipates into another language, real or otherwise, another meaning. Like all endeavours, it also is reliant upon co-authorship, like architecture, upon the skills and insights of others. Ezra Pound chopping, changing, editing and infusing Eliot's text into something quite different from the initial proposition he sent. A text which is more, more than stands upon the shoulders of literary giants, but grafts whole limbs and sections of things which went before it into its very form and shape. In the way it references, montages, plays and pulls at the texts it emerges from, I think it speaks to architectural process and collaboration. It's a poem I've been thinking about in terms of architecture recently. In a very literal terms, it demarcates the interiors, bridges, coffered ceilings, churches and streets, which make up the macro and the micro of the built environment. But it also brings forth the smells, voices, confusion, alienation uh, and warmth, decay and rebirth, which are the atmosphere of place and are either contained by architecture or which create it. Uh, it fuses man-made and natural and it confuses the reader from knowing which is which. It's also a film, a film, a poem of London, unlike many other poems. As a heap of fragments, it's a perfect bedtime read, carving new passageways for the city of dreams, inviting new characters to your stories in your sleep. One, the burial of the dead. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dried tubers. Summer surprised us, coming over the Starnberg essay. With a shower of rain, we stopped in the colonnade and went on in the sunlight into the Hofgarten and drank coffee and talked for an hour. Bingar kein Russin, stammers Litauen, echt Deutsch, and when we were children, staying at the Archduke's, my cousins, he took me out on a sled, and I was frightened. He said, Marie, Marie, hold on tight, and down we went. In the mountains, there you feel free. I read much of the night, and go south in the winter. What are the roots that clutch, what branches grow out of this stony rubbish? Son of man, you cannot say or guess, for, no, for you know only a heap of broken images, where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone no sound of water. Only there is shadow under this red rock. Come in under the shadow of this red rock, and I will show you something different from either your shadow at morning striding behind you, or your shadow at evening rising to meet you. I will show you fear in a handful of dust. Frischweit der Wind, der Hamait zu, mein Irish kind, Du. You gave me hyacinth first a year ago. They called me the hyacinth girl. Yet when we came back late from the hyacinth garden, your arms full and your hair wet, I could not speak and my eyes failed. I was neither living nor dead and I knew nothing. Looking into the heart of light, the silence, Ued und leer das Meer. Madame Sosistris, famous clairvoyant, had a bad cold. Nevertheless, is known to be the wisest woman in Europe, with a wicked pack of cards. Here, said she, is your card, the drowned Venetian sailor. Those are pearls that were his eyes, look. Here is a belladonna, the lady of the rocks, the lady of situations. Here is the man with three staves, and here the wheel, and here is the one-eyed merchant, and this card, which is blank, is something he carries on his back, which I am forbidden to see. I do not find the hanged man, 
fear death by the water. I see crowds of people walking round in a ring. Thank you, if you see, Midis Equitoni. Tell her I bring the horoscope myself. One must be so careful these days. Unreal city, under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge, so many I had fought I had not fought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Flowed up the hill and down King William Street, to where St Mary Woolnoth kept the hours, with a dead sound on the final stroke of nine. There I saw one I knew, and stopped him, crying, Stetson, you who were with me in the ships at Miley, that corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year, or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence, that's fiend, that's friend to men, or with his nails he'll dig it up again. You, hypocrite lecture, mon semblable, mon frere. Two, a game of chess. The chair she sat in, like a burnished throne, glowed on the marble, where the glass held up by standards wrought with fruited vines from which a golden cupidon peeped out, another hid his eyes behind his wings, doubled the flames of seven-branched candelabra, reflecting light upon the table as the glitter of her jewels rose to meet it from satin cases poured in rich profusion. In vials of ivory and coloured glass, unstoppered, lurked her strange synthetic perfumes, Unguent, powdered or liquid, troubled, confused, and drowned the scents in odours. Stirred by the air that freshened from the window, these ascended in fattening the prolonged candle flames. Flung their smoke into the laquearia, stirring the pattern on the coffered ceiling, huge seaward fed with copper, burned green and orange, framed by the coloured stone, in which sad light a carved dolphin swam. Above the antique mantel was displayed, as though a window gave upon the sylvan scene, the change of Philomel by the barbarous king so rudely forced, yet there the nightingale filled all the desert with, with inviolable voice, and still she cried, and still the world pursues, jug jug, to dirty ears. And other withered stumps of time were told upon the walls, staring forms leaned out, leaning, hushing the room enclosed, Footsteps shuffled on the stair, under the firelight, under the brush, her hair spread out in fiery points, glowed into words, then would be savagely still. My nerves are bad tonight. Yes, bad. Stay with me. Speak to me. Why do you never speak? Speak. What are you thinking of? What? Thinking. What? I never know what you are thinking. Think. I think we were in Rat's Alley, where the dead men lost their bones. What is that noise? The wind under the door. What is that noise now? What is the wind doing? Nothing again, nothing. Do you know nothing? Do you see nothing? Do you remember nothing? I remember those are pearls that were his eyes. Are you alive or not? Is there nothing in your head? But, oh, 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 that Shakespearean rag. It's so elegant, so intelligent. What shall I do now? What shall I do? I shall rush out as I am and walk the street with my hair down, so. What shall we do tomorrow? What shall we ever do? The hot water at ten, and if it rains, a closed car at four, and we shall play a game of chess, pressing lidless eyes and waiting for a knock upon the door. When Lil's husband got demobbed, I said, I don't mince my words, I said to her myself, hurry up please, it's time. Now Albert's coming back, make yourself a bit smart. He'll want to know what you've done with that money he gave you. To get yourself some teeth, he did. I was there. You have them all out, Lil, and got a nice set. He said, I swear I can't bear to look at you. And no more can't I, I said, and I think of Paul Albert. Poor Albert, he's been in the army four years. He wants a good time. And if you don't give it him, there's others that will, I said. Oh, is there? She said, something all that, I said. Then I'll know who to thank, she said, and gave me a straight look. Hurry up, please. It's time. If you don't like it, you can get on with it, I said. Others can pick and choose if you can't. But if Albert makes off, it won't be for lack of telling. You ought to be ashamed, I said, to look so antique and her only 30 to 31. I can't help it, she said, pulling a long face. It's them pills I took to bring it off, she said. She's had five already and nearly died of young George. The chemist said it would be all right, but I've never been the same. 
You are a proper fool, I said. Well, if Albert won't leave you alone, there it is, I said. What you get married for if you don't want children? Hurry up, please. It's time. Well, that Sunday, Albert was home. They had a hot gammon and they asked me into dinner to get the beauty of it hot. Hurry up, please. It's time. Hurry up, please. It's time. Good night, Bill. Good night, Lou. Good night, May. Good night. Ta ta. Good night. Good night. Good night, ladies. Good night, sweet ladies. Good night. Good night. Three. The fire sermon. The river's tent is broken. The last fingers of leaf clutch and sink into the wet bank. The wind crosses the brown land unheard. The nymphs are departed. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. The river bears no empty bottles, sandwich papers, silk handkerchiefs, cardboard boxes, cigarette ends, or other testimony of summer nights. The nymphs are departed, and their friends, the loitering heirs of city directors, departed, have left no addresses. By the waters of Lehman I sat down and wept. Sweet Thames, run softly till I end my song. Sweet Thames, run softly, for I speak not loud or long. But at my back in a cold blast I hear the rattle of bones and chuckle spread from ear to ear. A rat crept softly through the vegetation, dragging its slimy belly on the bank while I was fishing in the dull canal. On a winter evening round behind the gas house, musing upon the king, my brother's wreck, and on the king, my father's death before him. White bodies naked on the low, damp ground, and bones cast in a little low, dry garret, rattled by the rat's foot only, year to year. But at my back, from time to time, I hear the sound of horns and motors, which shall bring Sweeney to Mrs. Porter in the spring. Oh, the moon shone bright on Mrs. Porter, and on her daughter. They washed their feet in soda water. Eu c'est voir, d'enfant, chonant d'alu soupou, Twit, 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 jug, 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 so rudely forced. Tiru. Unreal city, under the brown fog of a winter noon, Mr. Eugenides, the Smyrna merchant, unshaven with a pocket full of currants, CIF London, documents at sight, asked me in demotic French to luncheon at the Cannon Street Hotel, followed by our weekend at the Metropole. At the violet hour, when the eyes and back turn upwards from the desk, when the human engine waits like a taxi throbbing, waiting, I, Tiresias, though blind, throbbing between two lives, old man with wrinkled female breasts, can see at the violet hour the evening hour that strives homeward and brings the sailor home from sea. The typist, home at tea time, clears her breakfast, lights her stove and lays out food and tins. Out of the window, perilously spread, her drying combinations touched by the sun's last rays. On the divan, a piled at night her bed. Stockings, slippers, camisoles and stays. I, Tiresias, old man with wrinkled dugs, perceived the scene and foretold the rest. I too awaited the expected guest. He, the young man, carbuncular, arrives. A small house agent's clerk with one bold stare. One of the low on whom assurance sits as a silk hat on a Bradford millionaire. The time is now propitious, as he guesses. The meal is ended, she is bored and tired, endeavours to engage her in caresses, which still are unreproved, if undesired. Flushed and decided, he assaults at once, exploring hands, encounter no defence. His vanity requires no response and makes a welcome of indifference. And I, Tiresias, have foresuffered all enacted on the same divan or bed. I, who have sat by Thebes below the wall and walked among the lowest of the dead, bestows one final patronising kiss and gropes his way, finding the stairs unlit. She turns and looks a moment in the glass, hardly aware of her departed lover. Her brain allows one half-formed thought to pass. Well, now that's done, and I'm glad it's over. When lovely woman stoops to folly and places about her room again, alone. She smooths her hair with automatic hand and puts a record on the gramophone. This music crept by me upon waters and along the strand up Queen Victoria Street. Oh, city, city, I, cannot sometimes, I can sometimes hear beside a public bar in Lower Thames Street. The, pheasant, the pleasant whining of a mandoline and a clatter 
and chatter from within. Where fishermen lay at noon, where the walls of Magnus Martyr hold inexplicable splendour of Ionian white and gold. The river sweats, oil and tar. The barges drift with the turning tide. Red sails wide to leeward swing on the heavy spar. The barges wash, drifting logs down Greenwich Reach, past the Isle of Dogs. Why la 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 Elizabeth and Leicester, beating oars, the stern was formed, a gilded shell, red and gold, the brisk swell with rippled both shores. Southwest wind carried downstream the peal of bells, white towers. Why la 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 Trams and dusty trees, Highbury bore me, Richmond and Kew undid me, by Richmond I raised my knees, supine upon the floor of a narrow canoe. My feet are at Moorgate, and my heart under my feet. After the event he wept, he promised a new start. I made no comment, what should I resent? On Margate Sands I can connect nothing with nothing, the broken fingernails of dirty hands. My people humble people who expect nothing. La la. To Carthage then I came, burning, 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 burning. O Lord, thou pluckest me out, O Lord, thou pluckest, burning. Four, death by water. Phlebas the Phoenician, a fortnight dead, forgot the cry of gulls, and the deep sea swell, and the profit and loss. A current under sea picked his bones in whispers. As he rose and fell, he passed the stages of his age and youth entering the whirlpool. Gentile or Jew, O you who turned the wheel and looked to windward, consider Phlebas, who was once handsome and tall as you. 5. What the Thunder Said After the torchlight red on sweaty faces, after the frosty silence in the gardens, after the agony in stony places, the shouting and the crying, prison and palace and reverberation, a thunder of spring, over distant mountains, he who was living is now dead. We who were living are now dying, with a little patience. Here is no water, but only rock. Rock and no water and the sandy road, the road winding above the mountains, which are mountains of rock without water. If there were water, we should stop and drink. Among the rock, one cannot stop or think. Sweat is dry and thick beater in the sand, if there were only water amongst the rock. Dead mountain mouth of carrier's teeth that cannot spit, here one can neither stand nor lie nor sit, but there is not even silence in the mountains, but dry, sterile thunder without rain. There is not even solitude in the mountains, but red, sullen faces sneer and snarl from doors of mud-raked houses. If there were water and no rock, if there were rock and also water, and water, a spring, a pool among the rock, if there were the sound of water only, not the cicada and dry grass singing, but the sound of water over a rock where the hermit thrush sings in the pine trees, drip, drop, drip, drop, 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 but there is no water. Who is the third who walks always beside you? When I count, there are only you and I together, but when I look up at the white road, there is always another walking beside you, gliding wrapped in a brown mantle, hooded. I do not know whether a man or woman, but who is that on the other side of you? What is that sound high in the air, murmur of maternal lamentation? Who are, those hooded, who are those hooded swords swarming over endless plains, stumbling in cracked earth, ringed by the flat horizon only? What is the city over the mountains, cracks and reforms and bursts in the violet air, falling towers, Jerusalem, Athens, Alexandria, Vienna, London, unreal? A woman drew her long black hair out tight and fiddled whisper music on those strings and bats with baby faces in the violet light whistled and beat their wings and crawled head downward down a blackened wall and upside down in airward towers. 
tolling reminiscent bells that kept the hours and voices singing out of empty cisterns and exhausted wells. In this decayed hole, among the mountains, in the faint moonlight, the grass is singing. Over the tumbled graves, about the chapel, there is the empty chapel, only the wind's home. It has no windows and the door swings. Dry bones can harm no one. Only a cock stood on the roof tree, cocorico, cocorico, in a flash of lightning, even a damp gust bringing rain. Ganja was sunken, and the limp leaves waited for rain while the black clouds gathered far distant over Himavant. The jungle crouched, humped in silence, then spoke the thunder. Da! Data! What have we given? My friend, blood shaking my heart, the awful daring of a moment's surrender which an age of prudence can never retract. By this, and this only, we have existed, which is not to be found in our obituaries, or in our memories, draped by the beneficent by, by the beneficent spider, or under seals broken by the lean solicitor in our empty rooms. Da! Dayadavam! I have heard the key turn in the door once, and turn once only. We think of the key, each in his prison. Thinking of the key, each confirms a prison. Only at nightfall, ethereal rumours revive for a moment a broken Coriolanus. Da! Damyata! The boat responded. Gaily to the hand, expert with sail and oar, the sea was calm. Your heart would have responded, gaily when invited, beating obedient to controlling hands. I sat upon the shore, fishing with the arid plain behind me. Shall I at least set my lands in order? London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. Qui sacosi nel focio che gli affina. Quando fiam uhi celidon, o swallow, swallow. Le prince d'Aquitaine à la tour aboli. These fragments I have shored against my ruins. By then I'll fit you. Hieronymo's mad again. Data. Dayadavam. Damyata, Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.